See, Flat Earthers, this is the one thing we have to our advantage. This is why I continually point out that we have been out here proving the globe doesn't exist for five years. Hmm, globe doesn't exist, eh? Bold claim, Mr. Pratt. We have had globe propagandists for five years straight fighting this supposedly crazy, absurd claim. Again, people don't fight things they're not threatened by. Have I just been got by Daniel Pratt? No, of course I haven't, because I don't fight flat earthers. I just make fun of them. <laughs> Go nuts on my nuts. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Playing the Blinder with me, the Creaky Blinder. Now first of all I'd like to welcome everybody that's come across from the Simon Dan channel and apologize in advance because, <laughs> yeah, we do it very differently. For five years. Can you not interrupt Daniel, that's very rude and I have not been doing this five years, it's actually been two. Today we're going to be taking a look at channel favourite Daniel Pratt and his ramblings because he's always got something to say. Never really makes much sense, but stick around and we'll take a look. Tidy! Ask anyone that's been around like I have for that entire five years, how much money you think has exchanged hands in the Flat Earth topic, both pro-Flat Earth and against Flat Earth. Probably a lot, but I'm not really sure what that has to do with the shape of the planet we live on. Some people are making pretty good money. <laughs> I'm sure some of them are making good money, that is. I'm not one of them, sadly. But the amount of money you make from the content you put on YouTube comes down to how much effort you put into it, how well received it is by your audience, and how honest you are in your content. There's been a lot of donation money thrown around. I've received some of it myself, nowhere near the money I would need to, to do what I'm about to show you, okay? Ooh, exciting. What are you going to do, Daniel? Book a flight to space to prove to yourself that we live on a globe? I wonder if you could book it just one way, maybe. <laughs> that would easily end this argument, period. I've nailed it, haven't I? Daniel Pratt is in communication with Elon Musk. He's going up on the next flight. He has to be. What else could he possibly do to prove to himself, a flat earther, that we live on a globe? Because after all, if you can't see it with your own eyes, how can it possibly be real? Because it's actual science, okay? Ooh, do you mean... The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the structure and study of the natural and physical world through observation and experiments. <gasps> Is that what you mean? I've spoken about it, demanded it, begged for it, pleaded for it. Oh, right. So we're back to talking about money then. And still, now think about all of the universities and billions of dollars that are donated and funded to these universities and their science departments, okay? Well, yeah, science is hugely valued by society because the application of scientific knowledge helps to fulfill many of our basic human needs and living standards. For example, finding a cure for cancer and developing clean energy sources. Both very important, highly valued scientific discoveries. And then I want you to think about not only why can't we get it done now, but why has it never been done in the past? Dan, you're going to have to elaborate a little bit. It is not the most descriptive word you could choose. Get to the point. <laughs> well, because once again, it would prove the flat earth. Wait, so it proves the flat earth. You're going to need to tell us what it is. And that kind of goes against their whole deception. <laughs> okay. But it's really this simple. Yeah, and if there's anybody who's qualified to demonstrate simple, it's a flat earther. And it's undeniable. It would pro provide the very repeatable, verifiable, falsifiable, testable proof that we've been demanding the entire time. Once again, unfortunately for the scientism establishment, it proves the flat earth, not the globe. And here it is. Okay, allow me to interrupt. I'm a big fan of managing my viewers' expectations. 
So please don't get your hopes up too much. All you need to do is take one swimming pool, construct some sort of girder system that can be measured with pre precision technical equipment to make sure it is within thousands of an inch tolerance like aircraft are built, okay? Thousands of an inch. This is easily done in today's world, okay? Then have a probe coming down from said girder that can touch in one foot increments all the way across the pool. And when the measurements come out within thousands of an inch, not whatever the curvature formula should demand it displays, it then proves the flat earth. You serious? You of course need someone genuine and honest to make sure that the computer system providing the measurements isn't skewed or messed with to provide some imaginary curvature formula as the probe goes along. In other words, every foot it... Oh, bless. Look how excited he's getting. He actually thinks that that experiment, if anybody was stupid enough to do it, would prove that the Earth was flat. How big is this pool, Dan? Uh, deflects a certain amount to try to... In other words, you'd have to make sure the computer programming wasn't messed with. The coded. Like they steal elections, you know? Ah, right, so it would only work as long as it was done honestly. Like by actual scientists and not flat earth, as you mean. So, it's that simple, people. Well, if it's that simple, Mr. Pratt... I'm going to guess that there's a video on your channel showing that you've already done this simple, undeniable experiment. I'm just going to hop over to your channel and have a look. And I'll just leave Dan to finish explaining his absolutely groundbreaking experiment to you. I won't be a second. Take an Olympic-sized pool, erect something to go across it with a precision measuring probe that the second it touches water will set it off. Do one probe, bring it up, let the water completely settle out again, move it a foot, do another probe. What is so hard about that? Well, I dare say there's nothing that difficult about doing that ridiculous experiment that would prove absolutely nothing. But Danielle, I've got a bone to pick with you. I've just been looking through your channel. You haven't even done the experiment. So what have you got to say about that? that <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the response I've come to expect from Flat Earthers. And Daniel, I've just got one thing to say to you about your experiment. I can see a flaw in it. I know insanity. But the one thing I want to say to you, Daniel, is size. How big would this pool need to be to prove anything? You do realize that the Earth is, well, it's, it's pretty big. An Olympic-sized pool should have curvature in it. Okay, so if you take the Earth's circumference in meters, which is 40,750,000 meters, and divide it by 360 degrees, you get... 111319.4444444 lots of fours yeah <laughs> okay mate so using this as the uh, circumference of the earth what I did so, so don't pay any attention to that it's uh, a glitch so I don't know exactly what's going on I definitely definitely didn't ask conspiracy cast to help me with the maths now basically if you take that 111.319444 figgity figgity four is i divided that by 306 and divided by 50 meters which is the length of an olympic swimming pool you get 0 0.00045 degrees of the overall circumference of the earth so you'd need tens of thousands of those pools to even register any curve not one 50 meter pool daniel you stupid boy and if you plug those numbers into the earth curve calculator which again i definitely did myself the number is so small it doesn't even register any curve now i'm very reliably informed by my super maths brain that you could work that figure out but huh, maths <laughs> therefore there must be measurable curvature 
in an Olympic sized swimming pool. It cannot be measured. They damn well know it. So all they can come and do is provide semantical arguments to avoid doing the science that will prove them wrong. Sorry, Daniel, but I must interject based on the amount of hassle it was just for me to find out that little bit of maths information, which I definitely did all by myself. It just wouldn't be worth them doing because they already know, based on mathematical maths. <laughs> oh, dear me. An Olympic size swimming pool doesn't prove anything, you dickhead. And that's what we've dealt with for five years. So you morons can keep trying to come up with your semantical little distractions and diversions from doing actual science like you have for five years and think you look brilliant. Well, I wasn't going to bring it up, Dan, but <laughs> thanks. Oh, the astronauts at NASA and their families think about their little feelers. You're calling them liars. Um, um, because they are. <laughs> Sorry. Kids of NASA lying astronauts, your dad's a piece of shit liar that's deceiving humanity. Tough shit. It's called life. Get over it. You were born to a piece of shit lying astronaut. And that, boys and girls, is what we call projection. Projecting your own feelings of inadequacy onto other, usually much greater people. But thanks for the compliment, Dan. I'm glad you approve of what I do here. Brilliant may be a bit of a stretch, but I certainly do enjoy myself. Don't you just love Dan Pratt? If brains were dynamite, that guy couldn't blow his hat off. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm the Greedy Blinder, and I will see you tomorrow night on the Agree to Disagree channel. Don't forget to tune in. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, all right. Watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe by order of the creaky blinder.